If you're managing IT infrastructure, you know this problem. You have a bunch of different servers, administrative interfaces, and maybe even Kubernetes clusters you all need to control. And you're now a bit worried about securing the access. Who logs into your server? Which users are active? And which resources do they have access to? And since everybody is working from home today, how do you give all your team members access? In the past, I've shown you the tool Teleport that we've used to authenticate to our Linux servers via SSH securely. But since then, Teleport had some pretty impressive changes in their software. They added so many new and cool features I just need to show you. So thanks Teleport for sponsoring this video. Let's take a look how to secure access to your SSH servers, Kubernetes clusters and web applications. Before we start, I want to address a topic that I'm not really sure about how to say. Because in the past, I've made many tutorials and walkthroughs of installations or deployments. But I feel like we hit a level of complexity here where making installation tutorials aren't always interesting to show anymore. It's not that I couldn't do it, it just doesn't feel like the right way as we advance in topics like Kubernetes or IT security concepts. And that's mainly because every installation and environment is different. Somebody might want to install Teleport on a Linux server, somebody else on a Docker server, and some really crazy people might want to install that on Kubernetes. I can't cover all these different scenarios in a short video, this would be just too much. So I thought, let's make more project-based videos like this one to give you some inspiration and ideas on how you could approach a secure access strategy for your environments. May this be on a small home lab server because yeah, Teleport is completely open source and free to use in the community edition. Or if you're interested in protecting your business critical infrastructure, by the way, in that case, it might be a great idea to reach out to the Teleport team and take a look at their enterprise version. But please tell me your thoughts about this, if you'd still like to see an installation tutorial from me, or if you are okay with finding it out yourself, but instead watch a more project-based focus video like this one. So just leave me a comment, I'd really like to know. In the past, I've used VPNs to secure access to my infrastructure, and that's still a viable option. But because I'm managing servers across on-premise and cloud networks, sometimes behind NAT firewalls, managing clients and authentication becomes a mess. You need to share and deploy SSH keys across multiple workstations or laptops, configure VPN clients, and expose administrative interfaces with reverse proxies and SSL certificates. And of course, you also need to secure the authentication properly. You need to make sure that nobody can directly access your administrative services. It's a lot of stuff you need to consider. And that's just the case in my small home lab, where I'm the only person accessing the servers. Now imagine you would need to do the same stuff, not just for a single person, but for an entire operations or development team, where you need to secure access for hundreds or thousands of people. And this is exactly where Teleport comes in, because Teleport is a unified access plane that protects user authentication, manages permissions and controls the access to your infrastructure where every session is locked. You can install Teleport on Linux, Docker, Kubernetes or use Teleport's managed service in the cloud. The community edition is completely free and open source, so you can just run it in a self-hosted environment. But I've decided to try out their managed service in the cloud. That isn't free of course, but it gives you a very free installation of Teleport, which is accessible from everywhere. Teleport runs a web interface you can use to log into your servers. And this does not require any program installed on your workstation. You just need a browser and log into the web interface. Every login is protected with two-factor authentication, so that means you need a username, a password and a second factor. So when you create a user and open the link to enter your credentials, you also get a QR code. And that you need to scan with an authenticator app on your phone. This authenticator generates random tokens every 30 seconds. And when you log into your Teleport's cluster, you always need to enter this token together with your username and password. So even when someone steals your username and password, he can't log into your account because he'd also need to access the phone and the token. So two-factor authentication is great to raise the security of your critical server environments. It's a standard way in IT to protect user accounts from being hacked or abused. 
Once you log into Teleport, you can access the server environments. So you can configure Teleport to access any SSH servers, Kubernetes clusters, databases, and also web interfaces. And most services are accessible directly from the web interface. But you can also download the Teleport's client, a terminal application which you can use to authenticate and log into your servers, a Kubernetes cluster or database. And you can also use it to manage the Teleport server itself. So that terminal client allows you to manage your environment, add or remove any servers, create join tokens, create users, and so on. You can create most resources through the terminal commands, but you can also edit any existing resources with YAML files. That's very similar to Kubernetes manifests, although it does not have the same syntax of course, but in that way you can change any user groups or permissions for example. You can very specifically say which user should have access to which servers and what the user is allowed to do. Teleport also makes it simple to get started because they have an excellent documentation page which you should definitely check out when you're using it for the first time. Because it has many features and depending on your environment, setup and requirements, it can get very flexible. But on the documentation page you'll find great examples, instructions and guides on how to set up this or how to administrate your Teleport server. Because I'm using Teleport's cloud environment, I didn't need to set up the server itself. The process was very easy and automatic. And I could could add my existing Linux servers that I'm running in the cloud very easily and I could then access them from my workstation. <laughs> Okay, I also want to show you how easy it is to access your Teleport cluster from anywhere else. So I'm here in my living room with my laptop. I haven't configured anything on this laptop. I just have my terminal up and running and a web browser. So let's take a look how this works. So first of all, you just need to access the Teleport cluster wherever you have installed this and you need to sign in with a username, password and a two-factor authentication token. And that's it, I'm now logged into the cluster. So that was pretty easy and I can now see all of my servers, my applications, my Kubernetes cluster and even databases. So I have already added two servers here on my cloud instance. So I should be now able to connect to this server. Let's log in with the root user. And this should open a shell on the server and I can now just access the server just like I would usually do with SSH. And I should also be able to see this session in the dashboard. So when I go to activity and see active sessions, you can see that there is currently one session in progress that I'm logged in from this IP address to this node. And you could also work in a team. So when you have two users, you could also join an existing session and see what the other guy is doing on the terminal. But also every session is always recorded. You can see everything that was happening in this session, what the users have done, and you can also scroll forward, you can scroll backwards and watch this like a YouTube video, <laughs> like a replay. So that's pretty cool to recap what was happening on your server. But you may not always want to use a web interface to access your sessions. Maybe you want to use a terminal application. So therefore Teleport also has the TSH terminal application. So let's go to their website. And then you can download the specific release version. You can see I'm still using their version 7.3 on the cloud instance and I can just download it now for, for Windows, uh, for Linux. But in WSL, which is the Linux virtual machine I'm running on this laptop as well, I can just download uh, the Debian package and download it to my personal folder. And now you have the TSH command active and you can just use that to look into your cluster and you could also administrate um, the Teleport server. And that's it, I'm also logged in. And I can now, for example, when I execute the TSH command, I can just list all the current servers, for example, and also log into that. Oh, I also need to specify the user because the user exit, which I'm using locally on my laptop, is not existing on the Linux machine. So you always need to match the correct users. And now I'm logged into my remote machine and I can just do everything 
just like on the normal SSH terminal. You could also use SCP to copy files um, using the TSH client. It just works the same way like SSH. I also want to show you how you can easily add another Linux server to your Teleport cluster. So for example, if you want to authenticate to a Linux server with SSH, how can you do that and install this on your server? And that's very easy. You can just log into the Teleport's web interface and in the server section, click on add server. So this will give you a script which will be valid for four hours because it includes the join token that you need to obtain from the Teleport's cluster or you can do it manually. So load into Teleport, create a join token yourself, and then start the Teleport agent on the remote Linux server and use that generated token to create this trust boundary between the Teleport cluster and your remote server you wanna authenticate on. So on my home lab server, let's just copy this uh, automatic script. Let's SSH into my home server. And let's execute this installation script. So this will download Teleport and automatically connect your server to the Teleport cluster. So if we go back to the Teleport's web interface, you should see your home server here. Using Teleport to secure your Linux servers and SSH is pretty straightforward, but the new features I'm really excited about are Kubernetes and web interfaces. I think that's extremely useful because Kubernetes does not have any user accounts where you log in with a username and password. The access to Kubernetes is always secured with certificates that are stored on the local kubectl config. It's very similar to private and public SSH key authentication. So when you have access to the private key, you have access to the server. Let's also take a look at how to configure the Kubernetes access onto your Teleport clusters. So on the official homepage, when you go to documentation, Kubernetes access, you can read more about how to configure it. And if you go to the getting started guide, you will see two different options here. So most of these tutorials are for deploying Teleport itself in Kubernetes. So if you really want to do that, you will find some great articles and tutorials on how to deploy this in all your different Kubernetes environments. I've tested this once and it worked pretty well. But in my case, I want to add the Kubernetes agent to an existing cluster and use the Teleport cluster in the cloud to manage a remote Kubernetes uh, cluster. First of all, you will need to get a join token to be able to deploy the Kubernetes agent on your cluster. So what we need to do is we just need to execute this command here. This will um, create a new join token and store it in an environment variable on my local uh, Linux shell. And then I need to deploy the teleport cube agent. And I'm using the Helm charts to deploy this on my Kubernetes cluster because this is very easy. And once you have deployed the teleport agent, let's also go into that namespace. And let's check if the agent has been deployed correctly. Yeah, it's up and running. So the teleport agent installed on the Kubernetes cluster should now initiate a connection to the teleport server. So let's go to the interface and go to Kubernetes and then we should see our cluster in here. So you can't manage a Kubernetes cluster through a web interface because you need a shell to do it. It will give you access to kubectl. And because I'm already logged into the TSH uh, shell, so let's use that to log in to my Kubernetes cluster. And if you now execute a kubectl command or a helm command, you are now using the short lift certificates that are now injected into your local kubectl config by the teleport TSH client. So this is very, very cool. You can see the context is changed to clcreativeteleport.sh, which is my teleport cluster in the cloud. And then the clcreative uh, kas staging, which is using the authentication of teleport to the Kubernetes agents. So in this way, you can very specifically say who can have access to your cluster and to which namespace or to which resources. So if you wanna know how to configure this on Kubernetes, there's a great documentation on the Teleport's home uh, page when you go to access controls and read more about single sign-on and the Kubernetes role-based access controls. So this is something that took me quite some time to understand. But uh, when you go through this document, you can see how you can uh, create and edit your users on the Teleport cluster and how you can give someone access to a specific namespace or to a specific resource.
The next feature to protect web interfaces with Teleport is also pretty cool. Because it doesn't just act as a reverse proxy and a jump host, it also adds two-factor authentication and auditing to web applications. I mainly use it for any administrative interfaces that I don't want to expose to the public internet without any protection, like Portana, Grafana or any kind of administrative web application. What is also pretty cool, you can use an existing Teleport installation on a Linux server, for example, as a jump host to these application interfaces. So when you authenticate to Teleport, the connection to the real server is then initiated from that jump host where you install the app server. And that's very clever. It allows you very flexible deployments, which should give you access to those applications, no matter where you deploy them. So let me also show you how I use Teleport to secure the access to my administrative web interfaces. So when you go to your teleport cluster and um, go to the application section you can add your first application here but that requires the teleport cluster to have direct access to this application and for example I'm using the administrative interfaces like Portana or Bitwarden or Grafana in my home lab and I've not added a firewall uh, rule that allows access from uh, the external networks to these machines I want to use a jump host inside my home lab that is using the teleport agent and this is very easy easy to do, it's not really difficult. So um, you first of all need to deploy the teleport agent on one of your servers, which can uh, reach uh, your administrative web interfaces. For example, this is my home server that is in my home network and already has access to those administrative web interfaces because they are hosted on this server actually. So what we need to do is we need to go into this server and when I'm there, I want to go into this file here. This should be configured by the teleport script which is uh, in the at etc teleport.yaml file. So this configuration file is for the teleport agent on my home server. And you can see that it only enables the SSH servers, which allows to connect uh, to the SSH servers on that uh, teleport agent. But you can also configure this teleport service to act like a jump host to your administrative interfaces. So let's go to the teleport documentation here and let's go to application access and let's go to guides connecting apps. So this will give you an example how you can configure the teleport YAML file um, to enable the access to an application. So let's enable the app service here. And in this section, we can now define our apps that uh, this teleport agent should try to connect to. So first of all, let's add an application for Portana. And this is the address from the teleport agent. So this will be HTTP. And it will be this IP address and this port here. Let's also add another application just to show you how it works. So let's add Bitwarden, for example. So let's write and exit this file and let's restart uh, the teleport service. So this will also throw me out of this connection from the server, obviously, because we've restarted the agent. But the server is up and running again. I can now log into the server. And when we go to the teleport uh, cluster, we can just go to applications and you should see your applications in this menu here. So you can see that you can access those um, services by using this address here. So I can just go to a web browser on any machine and just uh, try to access it. You first of all need to log in to your teleport cluster, of course, but because I'm already logged in, it should create a reverse tunnel into my home network to the home server. And you can see I can now access this. Um, it's using valid certificates because they are exposed by the teleport cluster. So this can also act as a reverse proxy and as a jump host. So that's a pretty great solution in my opinion to secure the access to your administrative web interfaces that you don't want to expose publicly. Okay, so I don't really know how long this video already is. So I might just stop at this point because you should have a pretty good overview of uh, the solution teleport and how to use that to secure your server access strategy. May it be on your home lab for SSH sessions or web applications or even Kubernetes clusters. And by the way, if you have any questions or you still want to see an installation tutorial from me, then please leave me comments or just send me a DM on Discord. Um, there you can ask me any questions. And it's also a great way to share your ideas and thoughts with other IT professionals. So as always, thanks everybody for watching. I really enjoyed making this video and I catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.